All right, welcome to Yard Work This Week. This is the Miami Dolphins versus the Kansas City Chiefs. Exciting game. At this point in the game, it's 0-0. There's 227 left in the first quarter. It's third down and five. And the Dolphins come out in that 3 by one formation they like so much. And I'm, there, there's some subtleties to this play right here that you're going to notice. This is Devontae Parker, and this is Mike Gusecki, so it's that Y-ISO. And... Right now, at this point, you can see as far as how they're lined up, they're not really showing their hand too much. So, Tua, Tonga Vailoa, puts Devontae Parker in motion, and you're going to see the disposition of the defense change quickly. See? He's going to go in motion. And now they're matching up. He knows it's man. He knows it's man. And this is a simple man beater, okay? Right here, and let me get my telestrator. 21 is trying to identify, okay, he's going to try to communicate with this man right here. He's going to try to say, okay, this is two, and this is one, okay? We already know that this is man up right here, and this safety is probably going to get this deep half, okay? So the problem right here is over here. Oddly enough, Kansas City, who doesn't pay too much attention to tight ends on this play, is playing the safety on the right hash where Gusecki is, while the play is on the right hash. Safety's on the left hash to the right of him. So, they're obviously playing a lot of attention right here. So, this is the man beater that they're going to play. They're just going to try to run up and try to run Jakeem Grant underneath, right? So, let's clear this up. And watch how 21 tries to communicate and then completely screws it up. We're going to run it really slow so you can see it. Okay, right there, he's communicating. And what does he do? He never left his man. They never switched. And they allowed Jakeem Grant a free release inside. That's bad communication. Leads to a big play and a first down. And the Dolphins are cooking early in the game. All right, here's an instance where the play call actually helps Kansas City. Dolphins execute anyway and get a big gain out of it on third down and five. But their pressure package on this play probably saved them a touchdown. Score 7 nothing. There's 13.09 left in the second quarter. It's third and five. And we're going to run it, and then I'm going to draw it up for you. We're running it slow. And let me get the telestrator right here. Okay. This is Devontae Parker. Devontae Parker is going to try to work his way up and across. What they're looking at right here is pretty simple. It's 11 personnel, so they're facing a nickel defense. This is some type of single high that they're trying to play with Tyron Matthew, although it's kind of an exotic, and since they have this little diamond look, okay, what they're going to do, all right, and which is kind of interesting, to be honest, is that Mike Isek is going to release a cross, right? As he releases a cross, he should hold one of the linebackers that are in coverage, correct? Okay, and then you're going to run Jakeem pass the safety that should either hold or press the safety up the field which just leaves the boundary corner and then they're going to run Lynn Bowden underneath remember you need five yards so this progression is pretty simple since Devontae Parker's uh, route is the most slow developing that's probably the last in the progression I guess if if it, if they all come, if it's zero blitz, if it's some type, some type of exotic zero blitz, you could hypothetically have Gasecki on the crosser, correct? But if it's all picked up and Jakeem can get even with the safety, then he has the go route and he has it one-on-one, -on -one, a race to the end zone. If it gets picked up with the safety going deep, then what do you really have? You have one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, Lynn Bowden. Now, how do you get 
to Devontae Parker was pretty simple. It's a four-man rush. It all gets picked up, and he gets to go boom, 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 and then comes back to this window right here to Devontae Parker. That's the only way that Devontae Parker gets into this one. You're going to see what happens and what saves a big game from the Kansas City Chiefs. They're showing a four-man pressure, right? And now it's starting to look like a five-man pressure because what is this man doing right here? This is Sorensen. He's peeking into the backfield. Is he peeking at Patrick Laird? Patrick Laird, if he releases, who's going to pick him up, really? Right? It could be Sorensen. But Sorensen's going to recognize that Laird is going to stay in, so he's going to come anyway. So it looks like a five-man pressure, right? Simple five-man pressure. He should be able to get to all his progressions, right? Let's keep watching. It's definitely a five-man pressure now. Well, it looks like six. And it's a six-man pressure. And they're getting through, and we're going to stop it. This is that the bottom of Tuatunga Valoa's drop. This is a beat right here. But the pressure is coming in. And what he's recognizing right now is, look, I don't have much time. I have to step into this throw. I absolutely have the numbers over here. And I got Jakeem leveraging this corner so what's gonna happen i could either just lob it to the 10 yard line which is an unlikely play or i can just time my throw to the boundary for lynn bowden because you will wonder okay well why not throw the crosser well you know look at all these people right here this throwing lean is not clean okay he doesn't have time for Devontae Parker, so that is out. So the action is over here somewhere. If this rush can hold up, then he might be able to see Jakeem, but he doesn't. Had the Kansas City Chiefs sent five, had they sent five, maybe they don't get this push up the middle, maybe they don't engage Patrick Laird, and if they don't engage Patrick Laird, you'll get to see what Jakeem Grant does. But Tua Tungavaloa recognizes that it's a six-man pressure, so the ball has to come out. He sees where he has the leverage. This is the easiest place to throw it. You just need five yards. He knows he has a first down right here. If he just throws it to Lim Bowden, we're going to run it. And there it is, the delivery. Notice what happens with Jakeem. Kansas City, by calling that six-man pressure, rendered this route useless. Had they come with five, had they come with four, maybe Jakeem pops. But he doesn't. Great play by Lim Bowden breaking that first tackle. He then falls down, but first down. Nice job. By the way, he does get up. Gains an additional four yards on Tyron Matthew. Now let's watch it from Tua Tunga Bailoa's point of view. So you can see what he's facing. And we're going to run it slow. And here he is. And he's already he's already seen it. Patrick Laird is engaged across. And there's really just no time. There's just no time. It's caved in on him pretty quick. As you can see, he's going to take the snap. And he's at the bottom of his drop. At the do bottom of the drop, he's already seen color. Forget about this crosser. He has to come over here. It's either Jakeem or Lynn Bowden. He had to go to Lynn Bowden. Pressure was on him. Very nice play right there by Lynn Bowden. I would have liked to see it in a little bit more decisiveness right there. He tries to make a, a cut against the grain on Tyrell Matthew, trying to be creative to try to get up the field and score. I would rather he just ran up the sideline, gotten the five or six yards he was going to get, and call it a play. Good execution to Otunga Bailoa. All right, score is 7 0, 10 52 left. This is the same drive as third and six. The ball's at the 13 yard line. This is a very interesting play. We've talked about this on previous yard, yard works, and the situation has presented itself once again. This time, the Kansas City Chiefs. They have a pretty good alignment here, and they have a pretty decent defense dialed up. 
you're going to see very quickly how this safety is actually going to drift toward Mike Gusecki. They have a little same 3 by one Y ISO formation. Mike Gusecki is all alone. Mike Gusecki is going to run flag route, right? But this safety keeps drifting pre-snap. And Tua notices it right away, and he says, okay, I probably do not have this. Okay? I probably don't have it. But what do they have over here? They have a combination route. And what they have here is essentially a pick. They're going to run Jakeem underneath on a delay. And Devontae Parker, remember what we talked about last week, is running a flag route. Remember what we talked about a couple of weeks ago, which was Mike Gusecki, Devontae Parker in the red zone, whenever you can leverage a team into one-on-one -on -one against either, that's your primary. Well, we're going to see something pop, but we're going to see a couple of reasons why the ball got delivered where it got delivered. Let's just run it and run it slow so you can see it develop. Kansas City's in nickel. It's obvious, man. So Tua Valoa knows where it's going. He's going to give a brief check on the safety. Safety starts to drift. He's off of it. Now, you see he's at the bottom of his drop. He's already decided. He knows what's happening right here. He knows that as this combination is breaking out, Devontae Parker already has his man leverage, and he's headed to the flag one on one. And Tua knows it, and that's where he's going. Now, of course, look at Jakeem pop wide open. But as you can see, this is one-on-one -on -one back here. And Devonta Parker probably should have had that. It's a great read by Tua Tonga Vailoa. Doesn't look it on the film immediately until you look at it one more time and until you see this. Now, we're going to run it slow. I want to see what he sees. Here's a snap. And Tua pays very brief mention in mind to the safety. But he's looking at it right here. He has the lane if he wants it. But he saw the break come first. You have to anticipate. If you don't go there right away, what do you have? You essentially have Devontae Parker standing somewhere around here waiting for a jump ball, and that route is absolutely dead. So the timing on this was made fuzzy by the contact at the line of scrimmage, but it was just a split second. He had to make a decision. What did he end up with? He ended up with a one-on-one -on -one in the end zone with Devontae Parker. He has to take that 10 times out of 10. In hindsight, the under route did break open, but that was a split second too late he had to make the decision it was a good decision the pass was there it should have been caught all right the score is 10 nothing chiefs are on the move it's first and 10 the ball is at the 32 yard line there's 845 left and we're going to run it slow and let's run it slow and let's see how the dolphins come out it's a two deep shell and they're a nickel and you can see right now Tyreek Hill is coming in tight to the formation. And what do they have? Let's stop it. Let's stop it. We have a tight end in tight, right? Van Ginkle's assignment here is pretty simple. He has to engage this tight end, regardless, whether it's a pass play or not. Remember, it's first and ten. So he has to engage this tight end. Now, what do we have on this side of the formation? Well, it's an offset eye, right? So if it's a run play, you need to get guys in these gaps. And we're going to see it from behind so you can see what's happening. But as far as pass, they have some type of two deep shell. It's one-on-one -on -one right here. This is man up. And Tyreek Hill, you have to account for him, right? You're going to see what happens here with Xavier Howard in a second. He's in tight, and Xavier Howard has outside leverage on him. So he's waiting for the release. And right here, basically, they're communicating essentially what's going to happen. And let me explain to you. Because you have to have Tyreek Hill locked up, right? He's extremely important on this play. So what's going to happen? If Tyreek Hill goes this way, 
Then Xavier Howard has him one. One. If Tyreek Hill releases up the seam, it's essentially a bracket coverage. This safety has to get deep. Okay? If he runs some type of in cut, this safety has to roam with him over top, and Xavier Howard can undercut it. So they could have a bracket coverage, right? But something happens here, and Xavier Howard kind of picks up on it. He calls for a shift, and you see it? It just comes way too late. Patrick Mahomes, I don't know if he spotted it or not, but he quick snaps it, and they have problems. Let's run it. Watch Xavier Howard. He's calling the. He's calling the. He's calling. He's calling the shift. They didn't do it. There's the handoff. They hit one block. They have a great block out here in Sam Aguivon. He cuts right inside of the corner, and now he's off to the races. Eric Howard. Eric Rowe tries to break down in front of him. And gives him too much of the sideline. Tyreek just runs right past him. Fagellum just can't get there. It's a touchdown. We're going to see it from behind the defense. So you can see what ha actually has to happen. We're going to run it slow. And right there you see that Van Ginkle's looking at him like, okay, am I supposed to call a shift? So, how are they lined up? Well, you have an offset eye, right? Okay. Do you have the numbers? One, two, three. One, two, three. Well, they're even. And then you have the, the linebacker that has to fill, right? So, what is Jerome Baker reading? As you can see, his helmet is turned. He sees this action over here. Okay? Because he understands there's another action over here he also understands the way the defensive tackles are shading you have one in the a gap as a 1a and then you have wilkins directly over the guard so automatically by this formation the chiefs have done something very interesting they've committed the two defensive tackles for the miami dolphins to do two things they have to blow up this interior line because out of this formation, it's extremely common to run counters. And then leverage the outside on the, on the Miami Dolphins. Or you could run leads. Okay? So what are they doing? They're running an end around. So Jerome Baker is spotting this already. And he understands what's happening. Now... Xavier Howard is calling for a shift. A shift could be suicidal against a counter. If there's a counter called, and they actually shift a gap over and put Christian Wilkins at the zero, you're talking about serious numbers coming downhill right at Xavier Howard. And essentially, the Chiefs could have five guys to block three on a run play with Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. But it's an end around, so they're going to play. They're trying trying to play it. As honestly as you can. So let's run it and see what happens. He's in tight. Great design, by the way. Especially since they're running it to the near hash. So you can see Jerome Baker's reading it and he sees it. Here he's got problems here. He's going to get caught in the wash. Shaq Lawson's already running. Now, what is Sam Aguivon doing? Since they got out on him, okay, and we're going to bring it back a little bit so you can see how they do it. And let's run it. Watch the fullback. Fullback shoots out, engages. Look at that job right there by the left tackle, passing him off, and they're trying to get out in front, right? Now, what can they do that's better? Jerome Baker is trying to hustle back there. But these offensive linemen are just already down the field. So let's run it. And there you can see. Let's bring it back. Let's 
bring it back. Sam Yvonne is almost defeating his block. He just has to make this tackle. He's right there for it. Now Tyreek Hill runs right past him, and he doesn't manage to slow him down at all. It is a problem. And the play is running. And I'm just going to show you some really good discipline here by the Chiefs. And right there, why Eric Rowe met him, and let's bring it back. I know we're spending a lot of time on this, but it's worth looking at. He's breaking down with all of this room right here against one of the fastest players in football. That's a mistake. He better be breaking down toward the sideline, trying to flush him back in so maybe his pursuit help can get there. It doesn't. And Tyreek Hill is going to score right down the sideline. But let's bring it all the way back. And let me show you some discipline from the Kansas City Chiefs. These are offensive linemen. Rules clearly state you cannot block with your back to your own goal. Right? Jerome Baker is pursuing this play down the line. He doesn't get there. But watch the offensive linemen. Just got a hand on him. If he blocks them, they throw the flag. Technically, it should have been a flag anyway. But in the spirit of the law, they're not going to throw that flag. But that technically is a flag. But very good discipline. To not blast your own Baker. If he blasts them, I think it draws the attention of the referee. And they blow the whistle. And they call a personal foul. Alright, the score is 14-10. to 10. It's 14-21. It's the start of the third quarter. It's second down and five. The ball is at the 44-yard line. Dolphins are in a dime it looks like one two three four five six yes they're in a dime defense and i'm going to show you how they're going to defend this okay eric rowe has in this particular coverage it's man eric rowe has travis kelsey one on one now right here you can see byron jones and nick needham are communicating with the about these two wide receivers they know who they have and they're going to be on man-to-man -man coverage Coverage is really, really simple. Xavier Howard is on Tyreek Hill. He's on the offside of the formation there on the left hash. So they have to defend a lot of field here. Xavier Howard's going to have outside leverage. And this is Fajellum who came in for Bobby McCain. And what he has to do is that he has to stay parallel to the hashes. He cannot get too deep inside of them or too far in. Because then he allows too much room inside. If the ball goes to the corner, he cannot get there. So Xavier Howard would have Tyreek Hill one-on-one. -on -one. Simple coverage. It's inside out. You got to keep your integrity in your back pedal. And I'm going to show you what happens here. We're going to run it slow. Travis Kelsey is coming in motion. And now Patrick Mahomes knows it's man. And it was obvious it was man beforehand. But Eric Rowe is going to have Travis Kelsey one-on-one. -on -one. It's some type of four-man pressure. Could be a five-man pressure. And it's not. It's a four-man pressure. But Mahomes buys time. And we're going to stop it. He's buying time by moving off of the hash. But what is happening here? Right here, his disposition is correct. Okay? But we're going to see at the snap what happened. Pay attention. At the snap. Why is he jumping up into the route? Why? Let's run it again so you can see it. What is he seeing that he's going to jump into the route? Could be that he sees his boot action and maybe he thinks it's coming across and he's trying to jump the route, right? 
But right here, this is bad news. While Xavier Howard is playing his coverage correctly, this safety is in desperate need of some help. He's not going to get it. Right there, he's turning his hips. So he can still save this, right? How does he save it? Well, it's very simple. He has to work up the hash. He has to work up the hash and not drift. Okay? He cannot drift inside. Remember, the receivers know where they're going. You already saw Patrick Mahomes do this boot action, right? So it's reasonable it could be a, a post route. So he is already turning toward the receiver. But right now he has to flip his hips and turn over, curl. Curl toward the goal line with the receiver. Because he's recognizing the route. And you're going to see when he recognizes the route. And it's just too late. Right there is at the bottom of the drop. And look where he is. He's essentially trying to cover him one-on-one. -on -one. He has the opportunity, since he's the deep safety, to try to turn his hips and give himself some breathing room. He doesn't. He gets right on top of the receiver. This is how not to play in a two deep shell. And of course, Tyreek Hill just runs right past him. And that's a touchdown. All right, the score is 30 to 10. It's 12.35 left in the game. It's first and 10. The ball's at the 29 yard line. Dolphins need a score here. Okay, and they're at the 29-yard line, and this is how they're going to try to accomplish this. They're going to run a two-way go, okay? And what they're trying to do is here is trying to get inside leverage up the field. That should hold this safety, which is Teron Matthew, okay? There's nobody else on this side of the formation. They're going to release Patrick Laird out into the flat. And they're going to run Gasecki up the seam as they run delay crossers with these receivers simple route combination what is it trying to do is trying to split the safeties because as you run two in combination maybe the safety bites on one but either way they know that the safeties are pretty wide pretty split and we're going to see what Tua Tonga Bailoa sees pre-snap which kind of induces the throw look at 22 drifting over there He's thinking about that rock combination up there. And he's trying to wonder if maybe I have to get out on the boundary on Lynn Bowden. Lynn Bowden's had a, a good game so far. But we're going to see what's happening here. Terrell Matthews coming up and creeping up. And it's looking like a five-man pressure again, right? It's not. They're bringing four. Matt Collins gets a good inside release, by the way. But that's what Tua sees. Tua is now... Scanning the field, and he already saw this, and he says, okay, I got my inside release here. That's good. But what do I have? Safety's over there. Okay, this route. That's gone. The rush is picked up, right? So what is he looking at here? He has this delayed route, but he already knows that this safety is outside of Gasecki, and Gasecki already got inside of Sorensen. This is one on one forget this it ends up looking like triple coverage it's not he recognizes it's one-on-one -on -one up the seam this is a gimme and Tua Tungo Bailoa sees it that way as you can see he takes one drop and the ball's gone down the seam safety was late he aligned himself out of position tries to make a hell of a play on the ball doesn't get there Gasecki touchdown and let's see it from Tua Tungo Bailoa's point of view as you can see he's looking you're going to see how he's going to try to hold the safety this Tyron Matthew over here and he's looking and he looked he gave it a brief look he's giving it a brief look alright I'm off of that I don't have that over there Oh, look at this. I have one-on-one -on -one coverage. And as you can see, that's what he's seeing. He's seeing that entire part of the field wide open and Sorensen underneath. 
of Mike Gusecki. Mike Gusecki goes up, gets it, touchdown. Dolphins are back in the game. All right, here's the game. It is fourth and one. Scores 30 to 24. There's 231 left. Dolphins can get off the field right here. They can hand the ball back to their quarterback. They can win the game. Now, how do they line up? Okay, they're lining up in nickel. They have to, okay, since you what in the personnel you have out there, it's essentially nickel, although there's a couple of backers that are specialists, so it might you can call this base if you'd like. But you can see how they're going to play this. They're playing this all head up. They're selling out to stop the run. They have the numbers on a strong side run. They can't get into the gaps on a weak side run. But they're in the shotgun, so stands to reason they're probably throwing it. So how are they going to do this? They're going to do this man-to-man -man all across, okay? Man-to-man. -man. This is as simple as you can get it. And Van Ginkle is going to have to try to engage with the back. He has no other choice. they got to go a little bit heavy since it is fourth and one. They got to have some of the personnel in there to stop the run. So, what happens? We're gonna run it slow, and then we're gonna see how they can do it. Is the, if there was anything else to do? So you can see, look at the hesitation by Tyreek Hill. He's releasing. He's the primary. That's all there is. How do you stop it? It's gonna take. Incredible anticipation for one of these corners to get off of their man and pick up Hill and go for the interception. But that can leave somebody behind you and for a touchdown. So it's a rough spot. I'm going to show you the only thing that could have been done, and it wasn't done. There it's caught. That's essentially the ball game right there. Tyreek Hill gets 22 yards, and that's the game. They soon get a field goal. That makes it a two-score game. Dolphins end up running out of time. Let's line up, and let's see how we're going to stop this. As you can see, Xavier Howard over here. See him? He's lined up on Tyreek Hill. We're going to run it slow, and then we're going to stop it, okay? They're lined up correctly. They have the numbers like on a strong side run. They have they could get into the gaps on a weak side run, and we see the problem right away. Man closest to the formation on fourth and one has to be in bump and run. Xavier Howard gives him some space as if to call a switch, and maybe they should have called a switch on the inside. And had he jumped this lane right here, he could have ran trail technique on Tyreek Hill. He would have taken away that little out route, but who knows what else they get behind him. So the only thing he could have done alignment-wise was to play him bump and run. They didn't. The other thing they could have done, and we're going to see right here as they line up, is make sure to call a switch. So he has to play, Xavier Howard has to play inside leverage, and he has to tell this man to play outside leverage, and they're just going to gamble, okay? And they're going to have to switch. They're going to have to both be pretty close up and see who goes where, and it has to be in tandem. If you screw that up, you're going to pop one man open. It's either going to be Travis Kelsey or it's going to be Tyreek Hill. In this case, it was Tyreek Hill, as you can see. He gets caught in the wash. It's a pick. You can see that it is a pick. But it's legal. In every sense. And the spirit, really. And we're going to run it from over here so you can see it. Let's run it one more time. So you can see. There's the pick. Nothing really you can do. Only play bump and run. Or just shoot it and play trail the whole way. And if you look at the design of the play, and let's bring it back. If you look at the design of the play, the way that they're rolling out and the way the offensive linemen have blocked and passed off blocks, I guess 
if it all gets picked up and Xavier Howard does shoot and undercut it, then they could actually just run it. They could be running power with their quarterback for a first down. So a lot of options there. Great design. Extremely difficult to stop. There wasn't much to do.